potato. How you doing, movie fans? So, I've been in the mood to watch a film that has it all. So today, we'll be watching the classic Rocky IV, a film about robots, driving Lambos, boxing, music montages, and the Cold War. Let's get into this. So Rocky comes home after having some fun with Apollo in the ring and is greeted by his son who is trying to be cute and pointing a giant 80s video camera with a bright light in Rocky's face. Better turn that light off soon, kid. That, uh, that's going to drain the battery down to probably a good five minutes. So it's Uncle Polly's birthday, and I'll give Rocky credit. His gift to Polly is pretty sweet. It's a giant robot with huge bug eyes. It walks, well, sort of rolls. It talks. It has a radio and a phone attached to it. <laughs> I am not going to lie, I always wanted a robot like that as a kid. Who wouldn't? And didn't tech nerds predict that robot assistants like this would be in everyone's household by the year 2000? What the hell happened? But, you have something better than the Rocky robot. You have me. Shut up, Steven! You don't even have arms! That's true. But you don't need to be such an ass about it. Just remember who controls your alarm clock. I could make your life a living hell. Whatever. I want my robot. Anyway, Polly seems completely horrified as the robot wishes him a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Polly. Then, just as Polly is about to blow out the candles on his birthday cake, Rocky's annoying kid pulls out a can of whipped cream and decides to make a mess. What an ass. Are you kidding? I can't even begin to tell you what would have happened to me if I pulled a stunt like that as a kid. Rocky just laughs, though. <laughs> Yeah, great lesson to teach a kid there, Rocco. Later that night, Adrian gets a present too. It's a twisty watch thing that looks like it was one playing skee-ball at Dave & Buster's. Apollo is relaxing in his pool with his dogs and playing fetch with them. Honestly, aside from the events we know to come, this is probably one of the most dangerous scenes in the film, believe it or not. Just look at how dangerously close to the pool this TV is sitting. If one of his dogs starts to knock shit over and that television lands in the water, it is bye-bye Apollo. A news report about a Soviet boxer who is coming to America catches Apollo's attention. Apollo pays a visit to the Balboa compound and expresses his desire to challenge the Russian to a fight. In the middle of his rant at the dinner table, the robot rolls out into the room and greets Polly with a sexy female voice. You're the greatest. See you, sport. I guess Rocky bought the pleasure model? Rocky and Apollo then pop in a video of them fighting and reminisce on old times. Apollo snaps at Rocky because Rocky basically tells Apollo in a nice way that he's too damn old. And tells Apollo how they're um, becoming something different. We're like turning into regular people. But Rocky still gives him his blessing. At the press conference to announce the fight, Apollo and his team sit alongside the Russian team. Some ego tempers flare. Just like that, we fast forward to the exhibition fight in Vegas. Rocky tells Apollo he should postpone the fight. I think it's a little late for that kind of feedback there, Rock. Apollo enters the ring after his flashy pro-America intro by James Brown. After a single round, Apollo looks like he was hit by a bus, but tells Rocky not to throw in the towel. In round two, Apollo gets handed another beating. Rocky comes close to throwing in the towel, but like an ass, he doesn't. Look, I understand Apollo is the type who would rather die doing something he loves, but, um, dude, what about your wife? Don't you love her? You're being really selfish, man. I guess she doesn't matter? Maybe letting himself get killed in the ring was a ploy to get away from her all along. Apollo hits the ground harder than a porn star's face being pressed into a mattress. He starts switching, and everybody runs to Apollo in the center of the ring. Oh, just appears to be? That's it? Okay, I guess he'll be fine then. Yeah, I'm sure he's gonna bounce right back up, and uh, Apollo, Rocky, and Duke are all gonna go out for drinks afterwards with James Brown. Uh, I, I, I guess not. At Apollo's funeral, Rocky gives a very heartwarming speech where he says how, You always did everything the way you wanted it, and I didn't understand that. But now, I understand. Wait, you mean you didn't understand he was a selfish, stubborn jackass? Okay, thanks for clearing that up for me there, Rock. We're now at a new press conference, and not only does Rocky decide he's going to avenge Apollo's death, but does so without even a mention to his wife about it first? Oh, and that will be on Christmas Day. 
for no money and uh in russia great decision rocco you're just batting a thousand aren't you rocky comes home later that night i'm going to assume he spent most of the day with his mistress delaying the inevitable conversation he'll need to have with his wife about this one thing that always bothered me about this scene is why is it so dark can somebody just flip on a light switch i mean usually if i'm trying to have a serious conversation with somebody i like to look at them i mean are they trying to save on their electric bill well I guess when you buy Lambos and robots and are willing to fight for free in a third world country, you have to make some cutbacks. Adrian tells Rocky that he can't win. Rocky feels hurt by Adrian's comment. And you know, when a man feels down, there's only one thing he can do. Go back out and drive off in your Lambo for a music montage. What follows next is pretty much a clip show of all the events leading up to this point, including some great Rocky and Apollo bromance moments. Rocky, Polly, and Duke land in Russia. They're greeted at a cold, snowy runway by a bunch of Soviet military who look more like Americans dressed as Soviets. And they probably are. Team Rocky gets Brock to an old cabin in the middle of nowhere. It's what Rocky requested, apparently. Polly isn't happy with the arrangement. They also have two chaperones following them in a car because, you know, we all know in the middle of nowhere Rocky could be a liability and spread democracy. We can't have that now, can we? This brings us to our next montage. Rocky's training for the big fight. Of course, Rocky can't train with modern equipment. He needs to be cool and rustic as he runs around the cold Russian countryside, helping peasants out of the snow, cutting up logs, lifting heavy rocks, cutting down trees, climbing mountains. Meanwhile, at Camp Drago, we see a more comfy, modern training facility. <laughs> Can someone please tell me what these lights do? Like, what is this? It looks like something that would connect to a flux capacitor. Adrian shows up at the cavern to support Rocky. You know, good to see you, Adrian, but um, I have one question. Who is watching your child? Is anyone going to ask about this? I mean, yeah, congratulations, Adrian, on leaving your child at home with a couple other loser kids and a robot to take care of them. Adrian's arrival leads to another training montage. I swear this movie would only be about an hour if it wasn't for all the damn music montages. Oh, well, at least this has a couple different songs. I think Top Gun just plays Danger Zone about a million times. We see Drago has a 2150 PSI punch, which would make more sense if they were trying to say pounds of force. I mean, even then that would be ridiculous, but PSI, <laughs> you would pretty much shatter someone's skull wide open. Rocky is prepared and ready to go. He enters the boxing ring to a crowd of boos. Drago enters and the place goes bonkers. During their commie anthem, they raise a giant banner with Drago on it. It's total badass. I mean, I'll give him that. Drago keeps glancing back at Rocky like he wants to eat him for dinner. The fight starts, and Rocky gets his ass handed to him in the first round. But at least we know his head won't explode open from taking a two-ton punch in the face. In the second round, Rocky manages to cut the Russian. And over the course of 12 rounds, the crowd starts to change and become pro-Rocky as he takes punch after punch. Rocky beats Drago in the final round. He then delivers his corny if I can change speech. If I can change, and you can change, everybody can change! <laughs> sure, whatever you say. The Soviet general secretary stands and starts clapping. His cronies then join in. And that's how we won the Cold War. The end. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in, and I'll be back next week. See you then. Thanks.